I get all these nasty bales off for a friend of mine. So I can put them on this side of the field because it's all muddy out there. I can hardly get in there with the tractor. It's so wet. But, hey, great job. All right, we're going to start putting this thing together, I think. I'm not going to 1184 these Chinese cases. I don't know how long they're going to stay together. But I'll use a better gasket, right? Pretty much it. So this one here is ready to get reassembled. And we're going to put that top end back on it just to see if we can make that run. Got that thing going again. Blew a huge hydraulic line underneath. So we had to go get a big line. Cost us 350 something dollars to get that line. And the shed is mostly up. Not totally. Got a few more things to do in the shed. But inching along, little by little, gonna move this thing out of here today. And I've been bringing in wood by the trailer and splitting it, building up a stash. And then on the other end there we're going to put a couple of hay bales. And the only thing we have to do is finish off the two ends and put the ridge cap on and this will be done. Ready to go to work. couple things didn't go my way this morning. One is my salamander heater started pulsing and I can't get it to smooth out and just put so much smell in this place it can't hardly work in here. So I don't know if it's dead or the photo cell is off or I tried adjusting the pump pressure and it didn't really make any difference one way or the other which kind of points to the photo cell. Either way, it's about 25 years old, so it may be done. So that was like strike number one. Then I was going to slam this one back together. This is the Highway 52 millimeter pop-up piston. 
build. Okay. And you know I've I've been fairly there's your pop-up piston and this is the highway 52 millimeter top end product, right? Well here's the problem. I started looking at it really closely and I'm not sure if it's going to show but right above the right above the exhaust port there that shows it well you can see that v-shape right there kind of highlighted well you know what that is that's the plating peeling off so that top end did not survive the test of time any more than the, the cases did where um, the bearing pocket opened up on the thing and it won't hold the bearing anymore. So I was going to take this top end and throw it on another set of these cases. But there's no sense in doing that, is there? Because not only is the case no good, but that top end's no good now either because it doesn't have that plating integrity anymore. So I guess I'll take the spring off and the muffler and stuff like that. Keep the piston. I mean, there's really nothing wrong with that piston. Maybe it'll go into a FarmerTech 52 millimeter at some point in the future. Bottom line is, is that top end uh, failed. Now, one of my options is one of the builds that I had planned on doing was trying one of those pop-up pistons you can get on eBay for the 48 millimeter 365 top end. Maybe I'll just put that together because I've got a decent top end and I've got one of those pop-up pistons and I was planning to do it on an OEM saw but maybe I just take that build and put it on this one instead you know and I'm not sure what I'll do with the carburetor because that may over carburate the, the the build you know maybe not it's just it's got those little transfers so it really doesn't flow as well so it's not going to take advantage of that bigger carburetor as much so I have a little bit of of concern about just swapping that right in there duly noted all right i'll make a couple of quick notes before i put this together got this from well little red barn genuine piston kit genuine to what that's a good question i gotta tell you they sent a whole book of information you know i think there's probably as much money in the manual and the information they sent is as actually the piston itself now i don't know who their source is doesn't really matter but it is a pop-up piston and this one's for 48 millimeter top end which is what this is and it seems to fit pretty well and this top end is a low hour top end the uh, the 365 cylinder a lot of guys toss these bob has been after me for a long time to try to put together a build with them and combined with the fact that they're pretty cheap. The goal here is to see if I can come up with a 365 build, original edition 365, with the 48 millimeter cylinder that's going to run with a stock 372. Now, I, I'm tempted to radius these right here. Well, real work is intervening. Since I tore the intake boot on this, because I had glued it on with 1184. I have no intake boot for this particular build, so I'm just gonna tell you what I did, see if I can find one. I guess I'm gonna use the aftermarket tank handle and the cases and some of the pieces over here, but for the most part, uh, the top end, the carb and all that are gonna be a blending of the 48 millimeter top end with the X-Torque. Because that's what I have. I don't have any of the OEM carbs for these, these things. So I have to use a blended X-Torque carb. And it's not all bad. The problem is that because of the small transfers as compared to a standard uh, 372 top end. I think I've got one over here somewhere. I go through this over and over and over again. 
to review. This is the 372 original edition 50 millimeter top end, which is made famous because they just run good. There's nothing wrong with these things. This was the 48 millimeter 365, so there's a little difference in bore, right? 48 millimeter piston is going to rattle around on the 50. And this is the 51.4 millimeter XPW. And the interesting thing, every time you look at these, every time we go through this, is the cross-sectional area of the transfers on the XPW is roughly the same as the 365, which means that the operating RPMs are going to be a little bit less than the 50 millimeter 372 um, XP, the original one, right? So I've done this, you know, everything is roughly the same on the cylinders with the exception of the bore on these. 51.4, 50 which is standard, 48 which is a 365. All right, next saw. I really need to do a pressure test on a 550. And the symptom of the saw is it runs, but when you turn it on its side, it shuts off. And oftentimes, oftentimes, what will happen is if there's a bearing uh, failure of some kind or the bearing is getting close to fail, um, it'll let that crankshaft move back and forth in the cases just a little bit. By the way, that's the part number for the, the tool that you put in the bottom section of the intake manifold on the, um, the 550s. And when I put it on common service tool, I didn't really see anything wrong with the saw. Right. So we're going to do a pressure test, move it around a little bit, and see if we can't identify what the problem is. This saw right here. All right, that should block that off. Should be pretty well blocked off, right? That's what you'd think. Okay, there's seven pounds. It's dropping pretty quick. Make sure you have the washers. There's little spacers underneath there. Make sure you have them. And I'm going to have to go rattle that off. So let me go do that. And I end up with all these freaking tools for all these different saws. Quite a bit of money invested in all this stuff. Playing that bearing. Let me 
pull the cloth side. Yet again, another special tool to rattle off the clutch. I'll go over and do that and come back. Bearing looks good too. I'm not sure that matters because it looks like the lip is on the bearing, kind of like that one. This is when it came out of another saw. This is used. To those who've never seen one of those bearings, that's what it looks like. And that seal. goes on that bearing surface right there. That's what comes out of those stupid things. Nothing wrong with that bearing. Nothing at all wrong with that bearing. Let me get a close-up so you can see the bearing. There's nothing wrong with that at all, is there? I don't see any like, score marks or anything on the side of the case that would keep it from sealing. So I'm going to put another seal right back in there. And I know the other side is sealing, so I'm not seeing any evidence of a blown gasket either. You know? I know that seal's good. I put oil on that and pressurized it. It didn't blow out anything at all. I'm pretty sure that bearing is fine. I have these, and these are... OEM seals for these. So I'll put a new seal on that bottom end. It looks to me like there's more protrusion of the inner race of the bearing than with this new seal than the old one. Again, that being the inner race. There's more seal tension, so th there was a change by putting that seal in there. Do I dare build the saw back up and assume that's the problem? I just haven't seen anything else. You know, everything else is pretty good. So let's see if that helps.
you know, as the day progresses and we do our normal thing, it's got to go up on the hill for a little bit. I think a little commentary needs to be had for these tools right here. And that's the Makita impact driver and drill. That I've got right here. Now you've seen this many, many times working on the saws. It's been a game changer for me. I'd say even better than the Bosch, although the Bosch is pretty cool. This right here is is the go-to tool. Let me carry it out here. Let me show you some of the other things that this tool has been used for. See that shed right there? Almost all the trusses. All the wall boards, and most of that tin up there was screwed into place with this particular tool right here. It's very one. The thing that I appreciate about these is the battery. I've already got a day of saw disassembly on that particular battery. And you go for a long time on that battery. I don't think I changed batteries but once doing this particular operation. And the reason why I'm going to this little bit of a, not quite an advertisement, it's more of a review, is because I was out here splitting wood. And all that wood, by the way, is stuff that Bob and I cut and I need to start doing things like maybe make it a little bit shorter and once in a while cutting off a limb you know and realize that the go-to tool is this EA 4300F that I got from the cutting edge. And the reason is really simple. Is it'll sit out here in the woodshed and when I need something to start easy, you just pull on it and it goes. I need a little bit more power than the battery saw to do that bigger stuff. It's one of those action speaks louder than words with you right there. Easy to start, enough power, goes for a long time on a tank of gas doesn't seem to mind when it sits a week or two from you know heavy use to heavy use so both those Makita tools are excellent that's the bottom line you can go into the specs and the bits and the bites and all that crap but the bottom line is those are two very 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 well thought out and well executed tools this was a little bit of a cluster I find it a picture of the hose we had to replace that we use this tool right here to lifts most of those roof sections up there. And let me see, I'll just kind of put the camera underneath and take a shot, maybe it'll get the hose. There it sits for another day or so, maybe not, maybe tonight. Next load that comes down, we'll probably have to get something trimmed and that's the saw that'll do it. This little gem right here is gonna go right back to the shop where it belongs. Definitely a game changer for me right here.